How do you keep the artwork clean and not damaged? I'm Anne, and I'm the textile conservator here at the Whitworth Art Gallery. And I'm going to try and answer a question that you've posed to us today, which is how do we keep works of art clean? I'm lucky enough to be in the gallery itself, um, because the conservators and technicians are still being allowed to work in the gallery. And I'm going to use this little video um, to give you some examples of how we keep objects, works of art clean. This is Gallery 1 of the Whitworth Art Gallery and it's the first gallery that you come into when you come into the space from Oxford Road. Um, and at the moment it's a set of displays that talk about the history and collections of the Whitworth. And there are a lot of examples in this space of how we try to keep works of art clean and not be damaged. But the first aspect I'd like to talk about to you is we are always given an enormous amount of help by our cleaners. Our galleries are cleaned every day, even during lockdown, so to prevent the build-up of dust around the space. And it's dust and pollutants from Oxford Road that can end up on top of our works of art. Now the simplest and easiest way of keeping these off a work of art is to put them into a case. And here's some examples. They're behind glass and the glass prevents both dust and to a lesser extent pollutants reaching the objects. It's not as effective with pollutants as it is with dust. And the interesting thing about dust is most of it comes from our visitors, like you. And so sometimes we do have to clean our works of art. And one example is Genesis in the middle of a room, which our sculpture conservator, Sarah, um, spent weeks cleaning just last year. And it was taking off an awful lot of fingerprints and dirt left by people. And so the other way that we try to keep objects clean is you will read these little notices on plinths that say please do not touch and the reason we ask this is we want to keep the works of art clean. We have big cases but we also make in our own workshops these small cases and here's an example displaying an easel and a sketchbook. But some works of art come in if you like with their own form of protection, and that is frames with which are glazed. And here is a portrait of Thomas Girton in what we would call a glazed frame, and that keeps the dust off the artwork. Sometimes, though, works are really too big to go into a case, or in this case also too heavy, and we do spend quite a lot of time keeping the gallery clean. Not only our cleaners, but the whole team comes in once a day in the morning and we check for dust and debris. And if it exists, we will remove it. Do you get to meet the artist? Has anyone ever damaged a piece of art? Hi everyone, my name's Lucy and I work on the visitor team at Whitworth Art Gallery. And I've just had a fabulous question from Christina. Hi Christina. Um, so she asks, do you ever get to meet the artists? And has anyone ever damaged a piece of art? So on occasion, we might be lucky enough to meet the artist. Um, we do a lot of the time see them kind of wandering around the gallery, kind of passing through. Um, they're obviously very busy a lot of the time. So um, it is quite lucky if we do get to have a few words with them. I should say though that last year I got the really lucky opportunity to work alongside one of our curators at the gallery um, for two weeks while she put up this show for artist Elizabeth Price, uh, which I thought was super cool. Um, so it meant I could work really closely alongside both artist and curator um, and I've never ever done anything like that before so that was really cool. We also had um, film director Steve McQueen in um, a couple years ago. So I'm quite a fan of his and his films, so that was really exciting for me. And although I didn't strictly meet him, it was, it was lovely just to be able to kind of see him in the flesh, if you like. So yeah, that was really cool. And of course, Christina, you also asked, has anyone ever damaged a piece of art? Uh, well, let's just say it has happened on occasion, uh, not too often, thankfully. 
Uh, but the, the first thing that springs to mind is Genesis, which is a lovely sculpture of a lady that we have in the gallery. Uh, now she's on a stand uh, which is called a plinth and there's been a few occasions where me and the rest of the team have come across muddy footprints. Um, all over it. Sometimes some crayon marks as well have been found on her. Uh, people just seem to think it's okay to climb on her which is a little bit worrying but never mind. Uh, these things happen but lucky for us we have a fantastic care and collections team at the gallery whose job it is to keep all the artworks looking their best. So if any stains or marks are found on anything, anything that basically shouldn't be there, uh, they've got specialist equipment that they can use to remove the marks and get them looking their best again. So lucky for us. I hope that answers your question, Christina. Thank you so much. Bye. How did you decide to work in an art gallery? Hi there, this is Francine Hayfrin, cultural park keeper at the Whitworth. Um, so, why did I choose to work at an art gallery? Well, when the role of the cultural park keeper came up, um, it really, really interested me because it was an opportunity to work with people, which I love doing. Um, it was an opportunity to work outdoors and get people interested in nature, plants and the environment. Um, and I'm a big, big plant fan. Love plants and love nature and um but also just because it was a really interesting role um you get to do different things and work with different people every single day so it could be working with people outdoors getting them interested in activities and engage with nature or the next day i could be organizing a really big event outside whether it be a festival or some kind of live performance um or it might be working on a project like we're doing building a new community garden um, for the area. So lots and lots of different things to do and get to work with so many different people that um, it's a dream come true, basically. What activities can you do outside? And what kind of activities take place outside? Well, some of them I just mentioned before, but we could do anything from gardening projects to building community gardens to putting big weekend festivals, welcoming around 10,000 people to come and enjoy music, art, performances, food and drink, you name it. Um, lots of physical activities um, happen outside to help people improve their well well-being. So things like um, yoga, Pilates, just walking, um, finding out more about the biodiversity um, that's within the park. So by biodiversity, we mean all the different things and creatures that live in the park. So all the plants, the insects, the birds, um, you name it. So a huge variety of different things um, that can do outside.